So this PS3 doesn't read discs and it doesn't even accept this. You try to slide it in, it won't pull it in. Uh, for anyone wondering, this is the 60 gig, 100% backwards compatible with PS2 and PS1 games. Uh, so we're going to open this up and show you how to swap out the disk drive in these. It's actually pretty simple. The only thing that takes a couple extra steps is you do have to transfer the chip, the board that is on your drive to the replacement drive because they are coded or locked or whatever you want to call it to the motherboard that's in the console. So you can't just swap over one from another console or another one you buy without changing over that board so that it thinks it's the same one that came in it. But it's actually not difficult to get in these. Um, this one someone's already been in because they removed the warranty sticker and the torque security bolt is gone. So you can kind of just slide this off, pick it up and already got some of the, one of these broke. That's actually not, uh, all of these are broke. That's that's not abnormal for these consoles. Usually that's the case. Um, you have, <laughs> well, normally you'd have more bolts in here. Uh, looks like there's only one bolt left holding this thing together. But normally you'd have a bolt here, 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 um, one there, two there, and one here, and one here. So yeah, whoever has been in this, I guess maybe they were trying to fix it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, but for some reason, they did put back one bolt. Maybe because they were selling it and they didn't want it to fall apart. That's the only thing I can think of. We'll take that out. Uh, there is a little latch back here that you push in. It's like right there. It's not hard to push in. It really doesn't take any pressure at all. Push it in. Lifts right on up. You want to kind of pull it forward, but be careful because there is a ribbon cable under here that we'll need to detach. So you kind of just want to lift it. It's not super short, so you do have like quite a bit of play. Uh, there's a little latch right here. Pop it up. And you just pull out the ribbon cable and you can sit this off to the side. Uh, those bolts normally would hold that in when it's in the console, but it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy in there. So we'll sit this off to the side. Not going to need that for a little bit. Like I said, these are actually not that difficult to remove. Here is your cable right here for the disk drive. You can see it goes in here on the side, but we'll just pull it out from the motherboard. And then this thing just literally lifts right off. Be careful though, because there is a ribbon cable attaching this to the motherboard. So the motherboard <laughs> to the motherboard. So you just want to pop this right here. It's another little latch. You just lift it up. Now you want to be careful with these ones, mostly because they are old. They probably haven't been moved uh, since the console itself has been produced. So sometimes you might break them. Uh, I find it easier to actually just lift the one right here and take the cable from underneath the disk drive. These ones are subject to a little more heat and that plastic usually gets brittle and it can break on you. So, but now we actually have out the disk drive from the PlayStation 3. We can actually sit this off to the side because we won't need it anymore. I'll clean this up off cam, you know, at another time before I sell it. But right now we're just focusing on how to fix these or replace them. All right, so first thing you do is flip it over. This is the board I'm talking about. Uh, got a little dirt on there. I guess it doesn't matter because I won't be using this board. But this is the board that you have to take off of your pre-existing non-working board or non-working drive and put it on the replacement. So this one will actually go to the working drive so that the PlayStation thinks it's the same drive that came with the PlayStation itself. Uh, it's not hard to get into these. Uh, you have like bolt there, a bolt there, a bolt here, and a bolt here. And that's if you want it to actually go in the drive itself. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I have a working donor one right here. Obviously, it can read. It tells you that right there on the top. And we're just going to do the board transfer, which is what most people will be doing uh, in that case. the This disk drive is not 
Oh, wow. What is that? Oh, the tape just... Okay, good. I thought that ribbon cable was ripped for a second. But if the disk drive is stuck in closed, which means it thinks it has a disk still in it, you would have to reset it. This one does not. I don't believe so. So everything should go fine. Uh, if not, we'll just have to take it back out and I'll actually show you how to reset the disk drive back into the open or accepting position that that sounds you you just can't say that and that sounds weird but with that being said let me go ahead and pop off some of these just want to open up these little these little black locking plates like i said you want to be careful you don't want to tear them but like i said you just pull these out they come right out like right after you open it so it's not much to it got those three out now we want to get our screwdriver let me move some of this stuff all right boom that's probably i don't know maybe a j j zero we'll go with that for right now so first thing we're going to do is we'll take off the board on the donor All these bolts, I believe, are the same length, so don't have to do anything special. Pretty sure they're all the same length, but we'll find out. What better way to find out than as you go? All right. And let's go ahead and detach this. Get that out of there. Do the same thing over here. Get it ready for transfer. Take that out. Yeah, using these gloves makes it difficult. This one's a little small. I don't feel like accidentally tearing it. Please get out of there for me. Come on. All right. We'll just lift up this tape then. That's probably what's giving it a little, a little extra. There we go. Yeah, that's what was doing it. Which worries me now that this one is torn because this might not even be the original one that came with this PlayStation. But we'll find out. Hopefully that's not the case. Oh, there's actually one more bolt right here. Oop. And you have one small little cable right there. I'm gonna be very careful with that one and just pull it out. But it doesn't take too much. All right, so you lift it and just slides right out. And we have our board. That's really all that's to it. Uh, this one will just sit off to the side because we need this. You have to use this with your PlayStation that you got the donor from. So you want to keep this in case you ever put a disk drive back into the donor console. So I actually pulled this one from one that has a yellow light of death. So that one probably won't be getting a disk drive anytime soon. But we'll sit this one over here because it needs to go here. No, uh, don't do that. We'll sit that one over there because it just, we don't need it. This one is going here because that one can read. See, you can get confused doing this. So you got to make sure you're paying attention. Obviously, like I do about 50% of the time. That way, you don't have extra steps. You don't have to go back in it and wonder why it doesn't recognize your disk drive. So hurry up and knock these out. Oop. And we got them all. We just pop this one off the side again. Come on out. There she is. And once again, pick up. And we slide out. And then we just make sure pull that one back. You want to make sure these two are out of your way. You don't want them to get caught under it. Because obviously we need to slide these back in. So now just go in. Slide under first. Come on. There we go. 
line them up. Again, make sure that cable's out of your way. Find a little pivot point. Oh, we gotta make sure all of our cables are up as well. Come on out of there. There we go. That's one, two, and three. Come on. Come on out of here. There we go. Okay. Now just find a little black pivot points. Set them down. These little two pivot pads let you know you're in the right spot. And now we just start bolting it on back down. Easy put a few couple bolts in before I start to reattach everything. Just kind of holds the board the board for you. Mostly you put them in the ones that uh you don't really need to basically have in the way when you're trying to uh, do this. You're trying to hook back up the cables. <laughs> right. And that should be, you know what, let's put this one in on the side and then that'll be it. Right there. This is so much easier when you don't have to use gloves. But normally these consoles are a lot filthier than what this one is. So I'm assuming whoever went in this before me did at least clean it up a teeny bit. Uh, probably gave up when they, I guess, couldn't get this to work. All right. So now we're just start hooking everything back up. Start with our little teeny plug right here. Stick that in there. Oh, doesn't take much force to get that to sit in. All of these can be done relatively easily because you're just kind of sliding them in and then you close down the locking tab. That holds it in. Same thing over here. Slide them in. All right, close down the locking tab. Same thing here. You don't really have to use these little tweezers for this, but it makes it a lot easier when you're wearing gloves. And boom. All right, so we have all these situated. That's in, that's in, that's in, that's in. And you got your little cable in there. So we'll put the rest of the screws on. Which we have one that goes here. And one goes here. I'm not sure, I believe that is, yep, that is it. It's just those, one, two, three, four, and five. Just making sure. And now we can sit this one off to the side because this one doesn't even work. So I might go in this one sometime and figure out maybe why it doesn't work. It could be just something in there that's broken. The, the motor could be bad in it, which is why it's not even pulling in discs. Or it could be, because if it's locked in closed position, you can't even push a disc in it if you want it to. It is almost like a barrier, which this one did not have. So uh, that's how I knew it was still in the open or accepting position for discs. Uh, so the motor itself has probably gone bad, which is why it wasn't pulling in the disc on its own. Um, but we'll check that out at another time. Sit that over here, and now we can... Slide these off to the side because those are for the other disk drive, which we won't need for a while. Move this out of the way. Move these because we won't need that screwdriver anymore. And now let's bring back the console. All right. So bring back our console. The only thing we have to do is put this cable back into here. And we can, I'll leave that there for now. But Take that off and we just boop, lift that up really quick and come on, come here. This one's not as bad because it's, it's a bigger ribbon cable. So try to do it to where you can see it on camera, but I also don't want to pull it too much. So you might not be able to see it, but you're basically just sliding it in and you lock it down like you did all the other ones. 
But like I said, that one's actually a lot easier just because it's bigger. Um, and we set that back down right there. There we go. Line that up. Uh, if you're wondering, like, for a good visual marker, there's a hole here and a hole there where the screws come through from the case that goes in through here and actually locks it into the console. So, and there's also a screw that should go through the console here as well. All those screws were missing, but we do have those screws. So, just plug that up. Come here. Go ahead. Come on. Plug on in. There we go. And now that's seated down, we can take that off and slide the top back on. Where is the top? There it is. All right, so same thing here. You just want this cable, put it back in here. Oop, and lock. All right, so, uh, did it sit there? Uh, of, course, of course it didn't. All right, so a quick tip, hopefully this doesn't come up too much, but there's like little slots right there, 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 and there. And these got little notches in them. So what you want to do is tilt it until it catches those knots. And then you can just lay it down. You'll hear it click in the back. This little piece you had to push in. We'll keep it in place while you put the screws in. Uh, I'm going to put the one screw in for right now. Just so that we can quickly test it and verify that it's working. And then I'll worry about putting all the other screws in. At a later time, because I have to open this back up and do a full deep clean of the console itself. And we'll do, might as well do a video of that. Why not? Right? All right. So let's go ahead and hook this up and see what we can make shake. All right. So we got it hooked up. Let's go ahead and turn it on and power. So far, so good. Right, there we go. So now we'll wait for it to start up. Let me grab a, one of my little bootleg controllers to hook in here. I use just pretty much to test. Oh, dang it, I didn't get that part down right. It's all right, that should be fine. Uh oh, let's log in to Dave. Good point. Uh, when you turn these things in or when you sell them, take your information off of them. A lot of people do not do that. All right, let's see what happens. Let's put us a game in. We'll use uh, Far Cry 3. This is one of my test games, just to see if it reads. All right, pulled it in good. It's reading. Let's see. And we have disc. So, we're all good to go. I would play it, but it's going to have to install. And I don't feel like waiting 100 years for that to happen on the old PS3. But yeah, so that's how you would swap out your disk drive for a working one if you have that issue. 